Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be doing the full unboxing and review of the Aorus X7 version 2. So this is a refresh of the older X7 that we've already done a review on. So up front for those who have looked at the first version, the upgrades in this version is going to be the CPU and the GPU. The CPU is now the Core i7-4860HQ and the GPU has been upgraded to a dual SLI setup from NVIDIA featuring two 860 mobile video cards. And for everybody else who has not looked at this laptop model before, what we'll be looking at is a 17-inch gaming laptop that focuses on being very, very thin, good price range, and incredibly powerful for its size. So go ahead and stay tuned for the full review and we'll get into all those details. So staying true to our traditional review timeline, we'll go ahead and start with the unboxing. You can see that you're going to be getting an external box and then an internal box. So this is the standard way to ship a high-end laptop these days. We do have nice foam inserts on the inner box, though. This is a lot better than just the cardboard ones when it comes to protecting it against shock damage. So we can go ahead and dispose of all of those external boxes and open up the internal box and see what kind of goodies we have inside. And right on top, we're going to have our laptop ready to take out and look at. So removing the laptop from the top of the box, you'll see that we have a cloth covering over it. This is going to keep it from getting scratched up. And you'll get a first look at the form factor. You can tell pretty much from the scale that this is a 17-inch laptop. Very wide because of the 17-inch form factor, but very thin. Underneath of that, we have the smaller boxes where we're going to find our product manuals, driver's disk, and warranty information. And on the other side, we're going to find our power brick and the connecting cables for that. And now that we've got the laptop plugged in, we'll go ahead and power it up for you for the first time and give you a look at all the different specs on it. So here is a nice oversized cleaning cloth that you can use to keep the keyboard and the screen clean. And for one of our first pseudo benchmarks, we'll show you the boot speeds. We'll use the center power button and the operating system is loading from a three micro SATA SSDs in RAID 0, so we have incredibly fast read and write times for the operating system. So in total for your storage space, you have 384 gigabytes on the SSDs, and then you have one terabyte on a mechanical drive for your mass storage needs. For the multimedia part of the laptop, we have front firing speakers on the far left and right edges. You can see the openings that are used for the speakers. And you can also get a really good view of the thinness of the laptop. As we pan the camera angle up a little bit, you can start to see that the keyboard is backlit and you see the white lighting come from underneath of the keys on the chiclet style keyboard. Also what we have up on the screen right now is a piece of built-in software that you can use to control various functions of the keyboard and other computer functions. With the keyboard layout starting from left to right, you'll see the G keys on the left. Those are your macro keys to program to do whatever you'd like. WSAD are highlighted for your gaming keys. We have the full number pad on the right hand side and our arrow keys are embedded between the typing keyboard and the number pad. Above the keyboard area, the only key you have there is the power button itself. And of course you have a small perforated area there for cooling. Now going back to the keyboard, you'll see the backlighting is available in one color, which is the white light. So you don't have the multicolor capabilities of some other gaming laptops, but it does give you the functionality you would need to use this in the dark. Now for a tour of the outside of the laptop to look at the connectivity. On the left hand side we start with our microphone and headphone jacks. Those are 3.5mm connections, a USB 3.0 port, the 15 pin VGA output, RJ45 for your local networking, and then the Kennington lock port. Once we get over to the corner, you'll see the slotted openings. That's going to be for the dual fan cooling solution straight into the middle of the rear of the laptop, two USB 2.0 ports, and then the DC power port for charging the battery and running off of mains. 
Now to the other corner, that's going to mirror the other side the same way for the cooling. Then we're going to find some more connectivity. We have the mini display port, HDMI output, two USB 3.0 ports, the mini card reader, and then we have the opening for your speaker. For more detail on the connectivity, you notice that we have VGA, mini display port, and HDMI. You can actually use all three of those at the same time and run a triple monitor setup. Now that we've covered the physical ports and connections, let's cover the physical size of the laptop. We have a tape measure and coins to show you the scale. As you can see both the front and the back of the laptop are incredibly thin, especially when you take a look at the specs of the hardware. So if you're currently on the market looking for a new laptop and you're trying to focus in on something that's powerful enough to play video games, but yet thin enough and light enough to carry around easily, give you a screen that's big enough that it's easy to see because of the 17 inch form factor, this is one you might want to look more closely at. We do have a matte screen on here, so that means the inside reflections from interior lights or sunlight isn't going to be as big of a problem as it would be on a glossy screen. And in addition to that, the finish on the laptop is also matte, and that can be very important. Anybody who has had a glossy laptop before knows that every single fingerprint shows up and that it's constant maintenance to keep it clean. So this is going to be easier to take care of. Now that you've had a really good look at the outside of the laptop and in the form factor, let's look at the weight. With the laptop on the scale, we can see that we have 7 pounds and 3 ounces from the laptop itself. Once we add on the power adapter, you can see we're at 9 pounds and 4 ounces. With those figures on the scale, we could say that this laptop does come in a little bit lighter than most of the other gaming laptops with similar hardware. And for separate weight, here is just the power adapter itself, almost exactly at 2 pounds. So that's going to be finishing off the outside portion of the laptop. Let's move into the inside. Here is the RAID 0 array of the three microSATA SSDs. So 358 gigabytes of space on one logical drive, but you're stripping the data across all three disks simultaneously for very, very fast speeds. Here on the device manager, you also see the dual NVIDIA GTX graphics cards and the new upgraded Intel Core i7 CPU. The system has four RAM slots available to you, and that can be eight gigabytes per slot. So you can have up to 32 gigabytes of system RAM. And here is our display panel information. Now that we've covered all the hardware from the outside and in, let's go ahead and start benchmarking it and put it to the tests. First up, before we start doing the gaming performance benchmarks, we'll go ahead and start with something unique. We'll do the sound benchmarks. Everybody knows that big, beefy gaming laptops can be quite loud and obnoxious. So to show you how loud each model is, we always do these sound tests, and we're using an ambient noise meter. With it placed right next to the exhaust, this is the loudest possible noise levels you could expect from the laptop. About 25 and a half decibels at idle. Next up on the environmental benchmarks is going to be the heat. So we're using an infrared thermometer to test for any hot spots on the laptop. Make sure that the areas where your hands are going to be stay cool, but yet the parts of the laptop responsible for cooling are releasing enough heat to show that adequate cooling is happening. And now we're going to run those numbers one more time with the system under load, running 3D Mark in the background. We want to make sure you have perspective of how the system performs at idle, but also under load so that you have every situation fully known before you own the laptop. And of course also we need to re-pull numbers for our sound test showing how much louder the system got under load as well. While the numbers help you understand how loud the system is, just be sure to remember that we're doing the worst case scenario. 
placing this right next to the exhaust. So that would be the same as having your ear right next to the exhaust if you were actually listening to this in person. Okay, now with all the testing done, this is how we did. Performance score of 8,728 in 3D Mark 11. Here we have the GPU-Z information on the NVIDIA GTX 860 mobile. And then beside that, here we have the thermal information on how we did during those tests. The CPU got up to about 98 degrees Celsius, and the GPU down in the 70s, the low 70s for 72 on one and 74 on the other. So the GPU stayed nice and cool. The CPU got a little bit warm, but still within the levels of tolerance. Also, here we have some scores for a newer and more difficult benchmark, the Fire Strike Extreme Test. Our score came in at 2,270. And now with the score validated, you can see the full information on our performance here. We have our CPU temperature, GPU temperature, and the frames per second on a nice line graph. Now for Crystal Disk Mark to show you the read and write speeds from the triple SSD RAID 0 array. And now for our final segment to the review, which is going to be the disassembly of the unit. We do have several screws we have to remove along the perimeter to get the bottom off, so there's no easy open bay door to get access to some of the system components. Once you remove all the screws, you can take off the entire bottom part of the laptop and get a peek at the internal hardware. All of the components inside are very easy to see and get access to, so that's a good feature. We'll go ahead and take a small tour around. We'll start with the bottom right. We have the internal battery for the system. Up above that, you're going to see the powered subwoofer and the two micro SATA SSDs. To the left of it, we have our mechanical hard drive for mass storage. Up above that, we have two more speakers. As we get above those speakers, we'll see the third micro SATA SSD. Next to that, our CMOS battery. In the very center of the system is the four system RAM slots. So we have two occupied currently, and we have room to upgrade the RAM if we want with two more. To the top left and right corners, we have the cooling fans. These are using heat pipes to connect to the GPU on both sides and the CPU. Underneath of here, we have our combo Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card. So everybody, that's going to wrap up our full review for the Oris X7 version 2. If you think this is a laptop you'd like to own or you would just like to learn a little bit more about it, then go ahead and check out our product page down below in the description of the video. And there we have the full specifications and the current pricing and availability. Also, if our review didn't manage to answer all of your questions, then feel free to ask us here on the video in a comment and we'll try to answer it for everybody. Or if you need personalized help, then feel free to contact us by phone or email. In closing, we really hope you enjoyed our review video today. And we just want to remind you once again, this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.